And hey guys, what's up? I hope you're all doing great. If you are looking for a channel about anything related to comic books like new releases, stories, writers, artists or TV shows based on comic books, then you just found it. Gather around true believers, cause in today's video we're going to talk about dark web. No, not that dark web, that dark web. I know that I told you that my next video would be an overview of the first volume of the Venom Epic Collection, but since the dark web event was finished a few days ago, I thought I should talk about that first. But don't worry Venomaniacs, you'll get your video. Anyways, with no further ado, let's start. Dark Web's main events are written by Zeb Wells, who is known for directing episodes of the TV show Robot Chicken and writing the Venom Dark Origin limited series. There are also some tie-ins to the Dark Web that are written by others, but we are here for the main part. As for the art, most of it is done by Adam Kubert, Ed McGuinness and Rod Rees, while there are also some parts that are done by Francesco Mortarino and Scott Hanna. Now that we've talked about the creative team, let's talk about the story and the crazy stuff that's happening, shall we? Well, where should I begin? The whole thing basically starts in Amazing Spider-Man Volume 5, Issue 93, or if you prefer legacy numbering, 894, when Ben Riley, Peter Parker's clone, realizes he's losing his memories. Since Ben is Peter's clone, these two have the same memories, so the only way for Ben to get them back would be to steal Peter's. However, Peter refuses and breaks a device Ben would use to get his memories. After a fight between the two Spider-Men, Ben fell inside the psychoreactive goo that it's supposed to confuse and rewrite matter. Now, if you want to learn more about the events that led to Peter and Ben's conf conflict, then you should read The Amazing Spider-Man Beyond, Volume 1, 2, 3, and 4. If you want me to talk about the whole Beyond storyline, let me know in the comments. Anyways, after Ben fell in the psychoreactive goo, Peter left him for dead. However, it turned out that not only Ben was still alive, but the goo had changed him and made him much stronger. Ben, along with his girlfriend Shanine, teamed up with the Goblin Queen aka Madeline Pryor aka Jean Grey's clone, who didn't have all her memories either. Together, they decided to take revenge on the people they blamed for the suffering. Madeline, as the Queen of Limbo, unleashed hundreds of demons in New York, so as to force Spider-Man and Jean Grey to do whatever she and Ben want. And this is how the dark web begins. Okay, before we start, I just want you to know that this is just my opinion. I don't want you to think that in any way I'm trying to force you into having the same opinion. Oh, and be careful, there may be some spoilers in some parts of the review. Okay, let's start. Dark Web seemed really promising at the beginning. Interesting characters that make you want more and more of them, in addition to the awesome art. Moreover, we got to see a new and unexpected villain team-up that turned out to be great. Not to mention that unlike many villains, Ben and Madeline seem to have real motives. Additionally, Dark Web introduced us to new characters like Hallow's Eve and Recrap that seem to have potential to become something more than just side characters. Lastly, the demons are very funny and... well, that's all. These are the only good parts because as, as the story progresses, it becomes more of a joke than an actually serious story. First of all, the story was supposed to be focused on Spider-Man and his clone, but turned out to be more like an X-Men story, since the only person that actually had some character development was Madeline. She started off as a villain and then turned to the X-Men side. They tried to make her look good all the time, while turning Ben into a complete joke. Not to mention that they absolutely ruined Venom. Madeline and Ben stole all the memories he had as a hero and a father, thus turning him into his bloodlasting self again. Some people say that this whole situation is good because he no longer has to deal with God stuff. But he had a son, and it needed much time for people to consider him a real hero. I just hope that this whole thing gets reset eventually. Now let's talk about Ben. As a villain, he seemed to have real motives, but his actions didn't make sense. He unleashed demons in New York, but then took Spider-Man to Limbo. What are the demons even supposed to do in New York now, and why did he have to bring them in the first place? He also tried to take Venom on his side, although he knew that Venom was evil again and was going to kill Peter. But if Spider-Man was dead, how could he get his memories back? See, I told you. Dumb decisions. Ben has absolutely no character development throughout the whole story, and he only got more stupid as he got stronger. And weird. I mean, what the heck is this? And you'd expect that Ben would become a hero in the end, but no. They had to keep him a villain and send him to Limbo. A better ending would be to make him realize he was wrong and that there are other ways to get help. Then he could just turn himself in. Simple as that. 
but as I said, no one has some character development except for Madeline. Lastly, what the heck is going on with Havoc and Madeline? The whole story seemed to be more like a comedy with occasional drama and horror than a genuinely good storyline that gets even better as the story progresses. Dark Web has been a hit or miss with most people. For me, it's definitely a miss. It seemed interesting but turned out to be really bad. And the fact that Trekrab, who was just supposed to be a joke, turned out to be the best character in the whole thing says a lot. Generally, the story isn't really good, but it can be pretty fun at times, so for me, it's 2.5 out of 5. It's not terrible, but it's not great either. Well guys, this was my review on the dark web event. And I just want you to know that this is just my opinion, and I don't mind if you disagree. I'm just here to say whether I think the story is worth reading according to my point of view. So tell me what you think in the comments below. And until the next time, Goodbye true believers.